Welcome to the final presentation of team number 52 for Texas Instruments India Analog Design Competition 2010. In the next few minutes, we are going to walk you through the entire demonstration of LED technology based low cost electronic security, an idea innovated and implemented by three students of Indian Institute of Technology Kharagpur, namely Shudipto Sanigrahi, Shubhagata Datto, and Sharbartho Banerjee under the guidance of Professor A.S. Thar of the Department of Electronics and Electrical Communication Engineering at IIT Kharagpur. The intention with which we began this project was to build a universal, robust, secure, low-cost and easy-to-operate electronic security system. Here, we focus on the block-level description of our working idea. As we can see, we have an application-specific module or ASM which is an authentication verification device and can act as a lock for door lock security or as a ticket checker for ticket checking machine or an authenticator for an ATM vending machine. Its function shall vary from case to case. We also have a user device or UD. A particular person shall have one user device which will contain all his vital information like the key to his house and car, credit card information, important contact details, and other relevant data. The secure transmission of data between the application specific module and the user device shall take place using the two LEDDA modules that we have devised. Introduction of the concept of LEDDA module adds a lot of features to our entire project. Here as we can see we have a OPA3355. We can see the OPA3355 here. This contains three OPA355 op amps which are used as comparator, trans impedance amplifier and LED driver. Thus one IC serves three purposes for us. Secondly we see we have a IC748C T02. This is a quad NOR gate. It is used to control the TX RX modes and the shutdown functionality. Use of this IC saves power when the module is not in use. So the entire module gives us an enhanced power usage. We can also see we have used a couple of potentiometers and other resistors to get our entire LDDA module complete with our LED. We are going to demonstrate data transmission using our LEDDA module. For this, we have used advanced serial port terminal which is an advanced version of hyper terminal with control signals like RTS and DTR. As you can see, RTS is used to determine receiver and transmitter mode whereas DTR is used for shutdown control. We have interfaced our LEDDA module with the computer with the help of a USB to serial port converter. As you can see we have a USB to serial port converter here. This is used to create a virtual serial port in the given computer. We are now going to transmit data from computer 1 to computer 2. The data, let us uh, write for example TI ADC 2010. So we can see that as we write TI ADC 2010, the same thing appears on this computer. The data is transmitted from computer 1 to computer 2 via this USB which converts it into a serial string and the LEDDA module communicates it optically and we get it back in this computer. Let us see what happens if we block the communication channel. For example, we have blocked it. Now if we write TI ADC, we are writing TI, we can see nothing is coming, we lift it, the 2010 comes. We can see that we have been uh, doing this uh, entire setup at 57600 baud rate and at a distance of around 8 centimeters between the two LEDs. So this is the optimum configuration of our entire device setup. We can take the distance up to 8 cm and we have been doing it at 57600 baud rate. Next we see what happens if we change the transmitter and the rece uh, receiver port. For example now as we, we are sending data from uh, computer 1 to computer 2, we will be sending data now from computer 2 to computer 1. We have changed the receiver and the transmitter modes. Now let me type something here for example TI we can see that we are getting TI here for example FGD 
we get FGD here. So we are transmitting now from computer 2 to computer 1. If we try to type something in computer 2, that does not come here because now this is in the transmitter mode and this is in the receiver mode. We have added another dimension to our project by using the LEDDA module with a fiber optic cable. We can see we have a fiber optic cable with us. We have attached the two ends of our fiber optic cable with the two LEDs as we can see. What we have tried to do here is transmit data from one LED module to another via the fiber optic cable. So let us see if we write TI, we see that the inter data gets transmitted through the fiber optic cable and we get it. So whatever we type, we are getting there. We type ADC, we find ADC there. The beauty of uh, this innovation lies in the fact that as the LED acts as both the transmitter and receiver, the cost of optical cable is cut by two. That means we do not need two cables, one for transmitter and the other for receiver. The same cable serves both the purposes. So this adds a really great feature to our LED module which is not present with other optically communicated cable modules. We finally present our project in the device form. Here as we can see we have the application specific module or ASN and the UD or user device. If we look inside the ASA, we see that we have our LEDDA module which has been interfaced with the ultra low power MSP430 series microcontroller. The entire thing is now connected with the computer using a USB to serial port converter. When we look into our laptop screen we see that we have made a software which is a virtual secure authentication simulator which drives the ASM. So, the simulator simulates all the possible functions that the ASM or the device can be put to use. Say for example, we are using the ASM and the UD for door lock security. The ASM now acts as a lock with lock ID 112234. Here we see, let us see how the entire authentication between the ASM and the UD takes place. So the lock is locked. We press the UD. We see that authentication takes place. The rapid blinking of the LED shows that authentication has taken place and the lock opens. Let us look into the serial port monitoring system to see exactly what happened. We see that at the very beginning when we press our key, the UD sends a start signal to the ASM. The ASM returns back by stating that it is in the door lock state. The UD asks the ASM for the door ID. The ASM sends back the door ID. Then the UD requests the ASM to give the data. The uh, ASM sends any random data like random string. The UD which now has the encryption code for this particular uh, uh, door lock knows that how to code or encode it. In this case we used a very simple code like we have added plus two characters. Like R is shifted to T, A is shifted to C and henceforth. After this encrypted data is sent back to the ASM, it checks for it and finally it says that success has been reached. Now, if a different door lock is presented to the UD, let us change the door ID and we lock the system. When we press the UD, the authentication does not take place and we see that the slow blinking of the LED shows that a failure has been detected. If we see the serial port monitoring system, we will see that the entire process takes place but after this uh, different user uh, door lock ID has been sent, the UD does not have the encoding scheme for that door lock ID and therefore it cannot encode it and the entire system is a failure. The beauty of this entire process is the same LED which is used for communication is also a detector of showing whether the entire thing was a success or a failure. Also during communication because the, the actual code or the key for the door lock is never revealed only a garbage value is sent or a random string is sent uh, at each time. Therefore this the entire bidirectional communication system makes it more secure. We used a very simple encryption code here for other purposes we can use, devise a much complex code. The entire ASM UD device combination can be used for other various purposes also. Take for example ticket booking where we can book the name of a, uh, of a movie, quantity say for 2. We send the data and we press the UD. It shows that the ticket has been sent. So this ASM will be in the ticket uh, booking uh, counter. Now inside the uh, movie hall, there will be a ticket checking machine with the uh, authorized personality. 
he will press the name of the movie and he will want the validation the entire thing will be validated that uh, there were two tickets booked and the validity of the time limit is also set to determine which shift or when the ticket has been booked this is done by the low power real time clock system that the msp430 series microcontrollers have the other various f uh, f functions that can also be performed are shopping atm card identity check and it can be extended to various different dimensions Hence, using the UD and the ASM, we have shown that the user device can be used as one genuine key for all various applications that we have in our daily to daily life. The ASM will be set at various different places for various different persons, but one person will have one UD and he can use this as a key, as an ATM card and for various other functions for, uh, for, for all other applications. At the end of the project, we would really like to thank Professor A.S. Dhar, our mentor who has helped us during the entire working of the project, our Department of Electronics and Electrical Communication Engineering at IIT Kharagpur, uh, Mr. Sagar Chuneja and Dr. C.P. Ravikumar from Texas Instruments who has helped us in doing and performing the entire project.